Okay, and I'm sat here today with uh, Professor Gordon McConville, who's a um, professor of Old Testament theology here at the University of Gloucester. Um, thanks for talking to us, Gordon. Oh, my pleasure. Um, given that we're in the 21st century, still quite near the start, um, why would someone want to study the Old Testament? What's, what new is there to say about it? Yeah, the problem with the Old Testament is it has that, that, uh, uh, that name, Old Testament, yes. which kind of just implies that it's uh, not very relevant anymore. Actually, once you look into the Old Testament, you find that it's just endlessly fascinating. I, I mean, the Old Testament's had an enormous impact on our culture. Uh, many of the stories, many of the stories, mm -hmm. in the people, people know one way that Samson and Delilah, or even Adam and Eve, and that, so, you know. so there's that, it's had that impact. But, but also, uh, there's more to it than that. Uh, the, the, the actual uh, stories, poetry, and so on of the Old Testament, it's just endlessly hmm. fascinating. There's no end to it. You, you take, um, well, the, the story of Joseph and his brothers in Egypt, you, hmm. you, you know, it's been rewritten so many times, and you just never get to the end of it. It really speaks to people, even modern people, maybe especially modern people, hmm. in our situations. I never tire of the Old Testament. <laughs> uh, you know, when I first studied theology and came to the Testament, I thought that's what I want to spend my life doing. Good. Well, that's good to have some clarity as well with it. Uh, but looking at the Old Testament and those stories that we find in it, um, I guess what we find so compelling often about them is that they are often not just a story, but they're reflections on human failings, human frailty, human sure. situations, yep. I guess. Exactly, exactly. So that's what makes them really... They don't, the Old Testament doesn't pull any punches. Even the greatest figures in Old Testament, the Old Testament story, like King David, right. the greatest king of Israel, still celebrated. You go to Israel today, you go to the King David Hotel. Right. Uh, he, he's one of the great figures in, in, uh, in history. Hmm. But he's not painted like some great hero. Hmm. He's a very flawed character. He murdered one of his own soldiers to get his wife. Uh, that, and so you're you, you're really meeting uh, real people in real situations. Uh, every kind of human emotion and situation is there. So there's something about kind of human frailty and kind of tragedy, and that's kind of woven into those stories. That yeah, uh, I don't think there's any greater depiction of a human situation than the Old Testament. Well, that's quite a recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and given that you've uh, devoted. Um, your career to studying it. Where is your research currently kind of taking you? Well, I'm interested in the whole idea of human flourishing. Uh, uh, human, it, it, one word that I use for it, I suppose, is spirituality. It's, so, it, well, I'm, I'm reading the Old Testament. Obviously, I'm reading the, the whole. I'm reading the whole Christian Bible, but the Old Testament is what I spend most of my time in. I'm reading it not just because it's some ancient book. Mm. But because I believe it confronts me in my human existence, in my time and place, uh, and it, has, it addresses uh, me as, uh, as an individual, uh, as someone who has a, a kind of moral uh, universe, uh, a social aspect to my, to, to my living, every uh, kind of aspect of my existence is confronted by the world. Mm. And that's what I'm that's what I'm currently interested in. I'm interested in how one reads uh, these texts for transfer for personal transformation and growth. Mm. That has on hearing you say that, the the resonance that immediately kind of comes to mind is that it sounds very ethical. If if what you find it and what you can you know you argue that people will find it if they read it with mm. kind of that in mind is challenge. It challenges yeah. you to that. So that, that's very much a question of how ought one to live, what are the things that one ought most above all others to value and not value. And that's, that seems like a kind of perennial ethical question. Yeah, that's a, absolutely right. Um, one of the ways in which a, a, a scripture uh, like the Old Testament can function is by confronting our own world, confronting us. Simply, it kind of holds up a mirror. Uh, in which we can see ourselves. So it does, it, does, it does confront us ethically, also in other ways. I would say not only ethically, but aesthetically. Um, and this is one of the things I'm currently really quite interested in. The fact that the God of the Old Testament creates the world and likes what he sees. 
So the possibility is open that he might not have liked it. Well, so uh, page uh, one, we're told uh, that he did like it. So he does, He yeah. called it good. And yeah. good also yeah. means beautiful in, yeah. uh, in Hebrew. And, he and therefore, we are also called into an aesthetic life where we can appreciate what is, uh, what is good and beautiful. So that, that's uh, one of the things that I'm, inter that I'm interested in. Uh, it, it's, it's flourishing in every dimension of human existence. There's a, an old kind of notion that um, religious books are really about some separate religious sphere which have nothing to do with the real world that we actually mm -hmm. inhabit, the real lives that we actually live. Nothing could be further from the truth. The Old Testament is about the whole thing. And it's freeing, it's liberating into lives of ethical choice, lives of aesthetic expression, lives of social relationship, political responsibility, ethical responsibility, all of that is there. So that idea of flourishing really is, although the word sometimes is a bit misused these days, in this real fundamental sense, a holistic approach Absolutely. to being alive. Absolutely, yes. And I'll tell you, uh, when I, I meet, I have postgraduate students here we, who are all researching topics in the Hebrew Bible, we're reading Hebrew, we meet every, every couple of weeks to read Hebrew texts together, there's a group of us, and then we go to the pub. Yeah. <laughs> That's holistic. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Pleasure.